different players. Uh, Denson is a guy that can, it's kind of like chicken in the guard. He can just find a crease and get to the basket against anybody. And then obviously Harrell's a guy who can shoot the basketball. So between um, chicken and Fred being able to score for us on the offensive end, they're going to do a great job on the defensive end. But it's going to be a team defensive effort. We've already talked about us being five on two. Every time one of those guys catches the basketball, we need to be five on two against those two players. Coach, I know we talked about the consistency from game to game, but what are you looking for to get that accomplished? Well, I think just the mindset more so than anything. I don't know if there's anything that we can do as far as like preparing for Auburn, um, but just kind of hark back on like our guys on how to deal with just a little bit, a tad bit of success. And, it, and it's more so got to be something from an attitude uh, standpoint than anything we do X's and O's, Y or anything practices. So um, hopefully our guys are maturing. I, I think that's the biggest step in order to come out and have success against Auburn. You've had a lot of success here at home this year. and The crowds are starting to come back out a little bit more. Do you, is that something you talk to your players about of kind of creating that home environment? You know, kind of like you talked about in the past, the home, you know, historically is a place that used to be a tough place to play. Are y'all trying to bring that back? Well, I don't talk about it. You know, I, I know sometimes like, you know, our, our guys have mentioned locker room talk about being disappointed sometimes about the crowd but I said you guys are in total control of that you know you win ball games and you play well people come so um, don't say anything about the crowd do your part coach we saw it a couple times in the non-conference schedule and then against Ole Miss and Auburn you guys I mean against A&M and, and Ole Miss down late in the games but they don't seem to get rattled obviously that was a point of concern last year is it Something you point to is you just experienced the game from last year, but it seemed like you guys never never lose your cool down the stretch. Well, I, I think it has to do with experience, but it also has to do with me harping about like how we fall apart at times against good teams when we have some adversity. And I, I think it always helps that we've had that adversity at home. Um, so like now, how do you deal with that adversity on the road? Um, but uh, I, I think it's have to do with experience, but I couldn't pinpoint it. With everything that's happened to IJ this year, Talk about having an experienced guy like Trevante this year as opposed to last year. He was kind of the only guy that you could, you know, that was a true point guard that you could depend on. But what has he brought to the table this year, especially with IJ's trouble? Well, I, I think he's improved. And, and I don't, I'm not saying this to, to belittle Trevante, but a lot of times you don't notice him on the court. And I think that's a good thing. I mean, I think last year when you noticed Trevante, it was for some of the things that he was doing bad as far as turnovers know, not seeing open people and things like that. But there's stretches of time that Trevante goes unnoticed out there. And I think that's a really good thing as a point guard. That means that he's not making mistakes. He's not turning the basketball over. He's doing handling his defensive assignments. I think Trevante Lovin has really improved as a basketball player. And I think he's handled his role really well. It's hard when you have a guy who's played over 30 minutes of ball game, and then he comes in and he's not the starting point guard, and he gives up that starting point guard spot to a freshman and not playing as many minutes as he played last season, even though he played well. I think he's really handled all of that adversity really well. You surprised you've been able to get out in transition and get points. You're, you're kind of famous for saying, hey, they've got coaches on the other side and, and they're not going to give up layups. But you guys have had 14, I think, fast break points against A&M in and, and, and a conference scenario. That seems like a lot of points. I, I think it's more so to do with not what we're doing offensively, but what we're doing defensively. I don't know where we are in the nation. I know last time I looked, we were 10th in the steals of the nation. And I know we're first in the SEC. And I think that's a byproduct of us being able to get out of transition. So I don't know more so if it's our offense that gets us out of transition, but I think it has more to do with our defense. How much does it help defensively when you talk about Denton comparing to Chicken? Can you take anything away from that? How much does it help having a similar player in practice on your own team to spare? Well, it'd be, it'd be different if we had a guy that was on the second team that we're going right, to play against right. <laughs> that could do that. But most of the time, the chicken is out there playing. He's playing against, you know, guys who are not playing or sitting out. And so it's a little different. So it, the simulation part of it is going to be difficult. Um, we've always got Travis Daniels simulating other teams' best players. So Travis is a little bit more of a shooter than he is a slasher. So we got him um, playing a part of a rail. We're going to have Tevin playing a part. Of Denson, so um, you know you'll never be able to simulate what Denson can do, but I think Travis can do a little bit from the standpoint of shooting. So you can just reference it, but as far as like getting a chance to play against it, it's probably not going to happen. And when you look at Morrell, he seemingly almost kind of compares to Relaford. How do you prevent that kind of repeat performance? 
Well, I think one thing is different is that I don't think uh, Harrell has the ball in his hands as much as Relaford does with Relaford being a point guard. But as far as like him being able to shoot the basketball, I think that's a huge difference. But it's going to be different personnel. Our point guards guard Relaford and our wings going to have to guard Harrell. Um, but uh, I, I think the thing that we got to harken back on is the fact that we didn't follow our scarf report plan. And that's what we got to be locked in on. Especially with the way people set a lot of ball screens with their fours, we've been switching a lot of those ball screens. So you're going to end up guarding different people all the time. So Colin Borker could be on Harrell, uh, Rockwell Johnson could be on Denson. So because of the way we're switching those ball screens, sometimes we could have multiple people guarding our two best players. When you look, I guess, at the overall week two, you have Marshall Henderson coming up at the end of the week. What's I mean, it's probably the SEC's three top scorers, just playmakers. What's that kind of like? What challenges does that present for your defense? And what can you kind of learn about it at the end of the week? Well, I, I think part of the thing we talked about with our team is, I mean, we need to have a team defensive effort. But this is really going to boil town down to guys individually taking on the challenge and, and doing a good job. I mean, we can't be helping every single possession off of those guys off of Dennis and Harrell. So it's really going to boil down to the chicken and Fred doing a good job of individual defense because if we're helping all the time, then we're going to make those other guys really good players on their team too. Is this a game when you ask maybe some of the other role players to step up offensively because chicken and Fred are going to take so much out on the defensive end trying to stop those guys? Well, I like those guys to step up offensively <laughs> <laughs> every game. So um, anytime anybody wants to step up offensively, I'm all for that. <laughs> He's still out. Yeah, there hasn't been any change at all, but uh, he's still out. He hasn't done anything activity-wise at all. Is there a timetable for tomorrow or at all? Or you just talk to the, to the trainers and they'll let you know whenever? No, yeah, it's, it's totally in the medical staff hand right there. Like, he gets a, he'll get a test from uh, Dr. Mabry and he'll get back to us. But, you know, from my standpoint, the fact that he hasn't done anything for a long time, and I doubt if he does anything today, I don't anticipate him playing. How, how does, you know, Denson and, and then when you see Henderson at the end of this weekend kind of change what you do defensively just because of the way they can stretch you so far? I mean, when they shoot a 25, 26-footer, I mean, they can make it, so you got to go out and go get them. You mean a rail, though, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. All right. Um, well, I, I don't think it does anything different as far as, like, what we do defensively. I think it does something different what individually what you do defensively. And what I mean by that is like, you may be a help-conscious guy, and when you're guarding guys like that, Harrell and Henderson, you simply can't help. You have some weak side responsibilities as far as like your rotation, but ball side responsibilities, any sort of penetration at you, any sort of like ball being fed into the post, you really got to lock into that personnel and not give those guys easy threes by going to help. But it still boils down to like not making those guys help. Individually, you got to do a good job on your man so you don't put one of those guys in the bind when penetration is coming at him and somebody's clearly beat, that you have to stunt and stay and watch a guy drive right by you because a guy can shoot the basketball. And that's what it all boils down to to me. Like, you have to be able to guard your yard when you're playing good teams. Kind of a left turn question, but you've you've been here a year and a half now and you haven't received a technical. I've, I've kind of looked and it seems like the with referees are kind of getting a little bit more you know, ticky tack on what they're doing with that. Kevin Ollie gets run from a game, and, and it doesn't seem like you buy into the whole, you know, like kind of get a T to kind of light your team up a little bit and, and, and do that. It's um, your mentality has kind of stayed the same in that regard. Yeah, if I got to get a T to motivate my team, then we're, we're in trouble anyway. So um, I, I, I pretty much try not to mess with referees or say anything to them. I try to coach my team because I think it's hard when you're harping on your players saying, don't. Don't talk to the refs. Don't react to the refs. Just play. And then your coach is out there talking to the refs and reacting to the refs the whole time. So I think you have to make sure that you concentrate on coaching your basketball team and not the referees.